Hey, what's up guys, welcome back. I have a question for you. When you think AI, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I think for a lot of people, it's probably some robot and maybe even like the Terminator movies where they rise up. But AI these days means something very different from what we typically imagine. And actually AI, artificial intelligence, is being used in a ton of applications as we speak for all sorts of different major companies from Google to Amazon and all of these. And they're gonna be using AI more and more as these technologies develop. So I thought it would be fun to go over specific uses for AI that you might not have thought of initially and actually do kind of make sense and seem really cool that we will be able to use really in the near future and some of them a little bit longer ways off. But anyway, these should be pretty neat to think about, so let's go. Now quickly, I guess we should go over what artificial intelligence is on a basic level. And I guess you could say it's just a way for a computer to learn to problem solve and learn based on its past mistakes and kind of create new ways to solve an issue where there is no definition given by a human programmer how to do it. So that's kind of the idea. It's basically just really good at problem solving. But it's definitely not as easy to make this as it sounds. And actually, things that humans are really good at, that they find really easy, computers actually usually find pretty difficult. And this is known as the Moravec paradox. And the idea is things that are simple as walking around. We don't even have to think about it, yet it is such an incredibly difficult and complex thing for a computer to do. And the theory is that the reason we're good at it is because we've had literally millions and millions of years where our brain evolved to learn how to walk and be able to do that. So our brains have had millions of years to learn how to walk and it was kind of imprinted into our DNA, whereas a computer, it obviously has no idea. That's why you see all those robot videos where they're stumbling around. But at the same time, computers are able to learn pretty quickly if you code the AI to be able to do it right because it's able to try one thing very, very often, just keep trying it over and over and over. Maybe not if it's a physical thing like walking because a real person would have to set it back up, but I don't know if it's like playing chess, which they do exist, you can have it run a million games at once, whereas a person would have to spend years practicing playing chess against other people to even get good at it. And also another advantage computers have is once one computer learns something, it can be copy and pasted to every other computer. That doesn't work with humans, unfortunately. It's not like the matrix where you can download a skill into your brain. It's like, no, if you wanna learn how to do something, you have to spend a lot of time doing it and then only you get that skill. It's not like you can go over and see, oh, I like the way that person can dance. Hey, can I buy your uh, dancing off you so it's in my brain too now? It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. So I think you get the idea. And how can we apply this to actual uses? And I think a lot of different situations will be visually based. So Google Lens actually did a demonstration when it first came out of how there was a picture and it was someone behind a fence and it was able to use AI to determine what that picture should be without the fence. Because a human looking at that picture, they're like, well, yeah, I, I, it, your brain fills in what's behind those chain links. It just kind of knows, even though you can't see it, when you think of it in your head, you can imagine it without the chain links. Now, a computer is not very good at that, but they used AI to maybe learn what the trees look like and what they should look like based on looking at millions of trees. So it's like, okay, well, I'll replace that with a sample of a tree that probably should be here. So stuff like that would be pretty cool where you're, it's based on teaching the computer what things should look like and it can realize that and then reconstruct it. Some other very similar examples are if you ever taken a picture and it's a little bit blurry, it's a little bit out of focus, it's like you can look at that picture and say, well, yeah, that's, I know what it's supposed to look like, but it's blurry, darn it. Or maybe it's a very small image that's low resolution. And when you blow it up, yeah, it looks blurry, but our brains can know what's in that picture and what it should look like. So if we take a picture of a cat that's very small, for example, we, we're imagining in our head like what the fur looks like up close, 
um, what the eyes look like, how big the cat is. You know, we have like how it compares even to the ground, the shadows and stuff. We can imagine all that, but the computer can't. It just literally knows what the pixels are. But if we can teach the computer a lot of different stuff about cats, and what cats look like from different angles, like what their fur looks like, different types of fur, how long the fur is, it can probably reconstruct what that cat looks like in a much higher resolution. So when you blow it up, it actually looks like a higher resolution of the real photo. And here's one fun example we can do. I want you to imagine a water bottle, just any water bottle, put in your head, in your brain, and you could probably imagine a hundred different ways a different water bottle could look. Like the color, the wrapper, the, the material, um, how big it is, stuff like that. And you can rotate it around. You know what it looks like from the top. But computers only recently have started to be able to recognize objects. And you might think, well, why is that? They have millions and millions of pictures of a water bottle. Well, why can't it know what a water bottle is if it's a picture from the top? And the reason is, it doesn't really know what a water bottle is, it just knows what a water bottle is called, if that makes sense. So let me rephrase that. When we think of a water bottle, we can imagine how, mu how much it weighs, you know, we know what goes into a water bottle, what it feels like to drink and taste the water coming out of it. We know situations where you would need a water bottle. So we know a lot about what a water bottle is and its meaning and its purpose, whereas a computer simply knows its name. It doesn't know anything about the water bottle itself besides what it looks like, and that's it. All right, so we just talked a lot about water bottles, and there is a point to it, and that is that there's one example of a company that's using AI to sort out recycling out of trash. So, obviously, if we're looking at the trash from what we just talked about, we can probably have a pretty good idea of what can be recycled and what can't, just by looking at the stuff, and we might not know why. It's like, well, yeah, it's plastic, take it out. We don't really know why we know that thing is plastic, we just kind of know, just with the way it looks, the way it reflects, um, how it might move when something bumps into it, the weight of it, that sort of thing. So there are companies out there that are using AI to teach a computer what different things look like when it's being sorted through the trash, and then it can correctly move it into recycling or to go to the landfill. So that's at least one practical reason, and it could make things a lot more efficient in the future in terms of recycling and energy usage, because maybe one day we don't ever have to separate out uh, recycling. You know, the computer and the AI will just do it at the factory, and it'll automatically say, all right, all this stuff goes to the landfill, all this stuff goes in recycling, and we will never have to worry about it. All right, so here's another pretty fun example for video games. So obviously video games have characters that want to act naturally and they could use AI to change their behavior that seems natural. So say for example you're playing Call of Duty single player and you have all these enemies looking at you, they will be able to kind of analyze what you're doing and then respond to it and maybe learn what you like to do. So it's like, oh this guy really likes to take cover so maybe we should start flanking or this guy loves to use smoke grenades, maybe we should use something else. Or here's a fun example, maybe there's a super difficulty mode where not just each individual enemy looks at your behavior, but the whole game is watching you and will implement that and t teach that to the enemies that you haven't even seen yet, so it'll make things super difficult. And again, like if your play style is that you like to take cover, you know, you're very cautious, maybe the game will see that and start making enemies flank you very often, or it might take out different objects that you can use as cover throughout the game to make it harder. So there's a lot of stuff it could do. All right, the next example I wanna give that I think will be used is home surveillance. So obviously there's Nest Cams where it streams to the internet and it'll notify you if something moves or something like that. And it might even notify you if there's people. But for the most part, these systems are not really very smart yet. But in the future, I think they will be. And it'll be more like a real person watching a security camera except it's AI. So for example, uh, I would hope that the computer would learn that when you walk into your house, you always come through the door. So if someone one night comes through the window, well, that's very unusual, that's not right, and it'll send you a notification even though you have notifications off, for example. Or we could also teach the system by showing it a lot of video footage of break-ins from other houses 
So it would now be able to look at that and say, hmm, all right, so a break-in usually happens when there's like a loud noise and someone kicks in the door and then a person walks through the door. So if that ever happens, I know that's probably a bad thing. And again, it'll notify the person immediately. So kind of like how I said before, we might not even need to enable different types of notifications. The AI will automatically know what types of things it needs to notify you for and maybe what types of things it should notify you with a sound even if your phone's vi uh, on vibrate or something like that. You know what I mean? It could give you priority messages for things that it knows is important. And finally, here's another use that I think will be really good and that is computer troubleshooting. So when we are using the computer, if an error pops up, a lot of times, you know, it kind of gives a little bit vague description of what went wrong, but we don't know why that happened within the program. We might know how to fix it, but we really don't know why it happened. And sometimes we don't know how to fix it at all. So we generally have to do a research and go on Google and search, hey, did anyone else have this problem? How do you fix it? Whereas hopefully in the future, the computer will pick up all this data from people who are using different programs and maybe a thousand people get the same error message from the same program and Windows will see that and then it'll maybe see how people fix that. And it'll look at what someone did between someone getting the error message and then not getting the error message and then it could suggest or even try it itself the next time other people get that error message. And also, maybe the program itself didn't give a very specific error message, but the computer knows what went on, even if it can't really fix it, because it is a computer as well, and it can give you a more better description of what exactly happened that can better help fix it. So a lot of this stuff is pretty high level. Hopefully you guys thought it was interesting. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have ideas of your own that should be pretty fun. And we can talk about that down in the comments. If you guys wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And also consider enabling notifications by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button. And as usual, thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.